Hi, my name is Thomas Foster and this is a beginner tutorial on Reason 12. This tutorial is perfect for you if you are a complete beginner or if you come from another software and want to get started with Reason 12 as quickly as possible. Good to have you here, let's go! After you start Reason the first time, you should see this Reason Setup Wizard and here you can choose your audio device, in my case that's the Universal Audio Thunderbolt and you can choose the sample weight, I would stay with 44100 if there's no special reason to choose something else and then we click on Next and now we see the main software of Reason. We have here some windows that we can open and close with a click on this little knob here. So with a click here on this button on the right side you can open the internal tutorials on Reason. Um, here on the left side you can open the browser. In the browser you find all the instruments like the drum machines, the synthesizer, the samplers, the effects and much more things that you can load into the rack uh, to play them and to make music with them. Here we have the mixer. Uh, to make the mixer a little bit bigger, I close now the sequencer. Okay, and here we can mix our tracks so we can change the volume of every track. We have an equalizer, uh, a compressor, and some things more and we will take a look to this a little bit later. Let's close the mixer again. The most important maybe is the rack. Here you find all your devices that you loaded and then we have here the sequencer uh, where you have a timeline so you can record here your MIDI notes or your audio or you can put in MIDI notes via the mouse or you can drop in audio from your system. Here on the bottom we find the transport. So we can start the playback. If you don't hear this click now, you can turn on and off the click here. If you don't hear the click anyway, if it's on, then you should go to uh, preferences here in the reason menu, go to audio and Take a look again to your sound card. Here you have to choose your sound card to hear something. All right. So again with the play button we can start it and with the stop button we can stop it. The faster way to do this is with the space key. So the first time you click space you are in play mode and you click it again to stop the playback. Play and stop. Very easy with the space key. You will hear now the click and we can see the metronome. Here we have the bars, so this is bar 1, bar 2. Here we have the beats, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 2 3, 4. Um, why do we have 4 beats? Because we choose a 4-4 four, four as time signature. So. Also very important is the tempo. If you want to produce something like hip hop or a ballad, maybe 90 is a good tempo. One, two, three, four. This is a little bit slower, right? If you produce pop, every tempo going up to like 125 is good. Uh, if you want to make a club track, everything between 120 and 130 could be nice. So a uh, house is something around 125. Um, if you want to make techno, maybe something like 140 is cool. Um, dub step is also around 140. Uh, drum and bass is 160. Yeah, this is much faster. If you want to produce speed metal, maybe you go up to 100. Uh, 299, this is good for speed metal, right? <laughs> but I think we don't produce speed metal right now. So why don't we go back to 120? This is a very nice relaxed tempo for our first beat because we will produce our first beat right now. How do we do that? The first thing we do, we take care that the browser is open 
And now we load the drum rack. To see the drum rack, you have to click here on instruments. Now you see all the instruments. And now we load the drum rack by moving it here into this area or simply by double clicking it. Now the drum rack is loaded and we can play the sounds of the drum rack here with this little arrow. So we have here two bass drums, here a clap, a snare and here a hi-hat and much more. We also can change the sounds. So for example, if I go to the clap, uh, uh, sorry, the, the, the clap is here. I can move it to the left side with a pen or to the right side. Um, we also can pitch it uh, with this one here. We can pitch it up or pitch it down. Mm -hmm. Maybe we stay here in the middle. Yeah. And now we want to produce our first beat. So there are two possibilities. One is to play it via the keyboard. So I have a MIDI keyboard connected to my computer. And if I play the C1, I can play here this bass drum. With the D1, I can play this clap. If you have a MIDI keyboard connected and this is not working, you can simply go to the preferences and you go here to control surfaces and here you have all your MIDI devices that you can enable and disable. But maybe you don't have a MIDI keyboard um, and you want to play it like a MIDI keyboard, then you could load the on-screen piano keys. You can also do this with F4 and here you also can play all the keys and you also can do this on your keyboard with the A, we play the bass drum with the S, we play the clap and so on. All right, but we find now another solution. We will draw the beat with the mouse. To do so, we make a double click here on the first bar on our first track, the Hip Hop Kit 3. That's the sound we loaded. If you want to load another sound, you can do this here. Um, then we, with this we say browse patch and then this is open and then we can load, for example, the house kit. So we have now different sounds or the techno kick. But let's go back to the hip hop kit. All right. So we want now to work just on one bar. At the moment, we have a loop of four bars. What does that mean? The cursor is now running until the right locator. And if the loop is on, that's th this button here, then it jumps from the right locator to the left locator. See? Boom. Here we jump to the left locator. We can move the locator simply by clicking on the right locator and moving it like this. You also can do this with the left key, right? Or you can use the option or alt key to set the left locator somewhere, like here, left locator, here. Or the command key or the control key for the right uh, locator. So let's set the left locator here on one and the right locator here on two. Let's take care that the loop is on because if the loop is not on, it runs. It does not stop on the right locator and go back to the left. It just continues. So let's click on loop. Let's click here. So now we hear just one bar, just the first bar where we have our clip right and now we uh, turn off the metronome here where it says click and with a double click on our pattern on our clip we open the piano roll or the editor now we can zoom in a little bit so one thing we can do to make this bigger is we can close the browser, we can close the rack, we can close everything that we don't need in this moment. 
But we also can zoom in here. We can do this here with this button here that we click here on the right button and move it to the left or to the right. We can do this here with this tool. Simply click on this tool and maybe you click one time here with the Alt or Option key, you can zoom out, right? Also here, you have the possibility to zoom in and out. And we also can use the G and the H letter on our keyboard to zoom in or zoom out. So maybe we take care that we see this one bar as big as possible, but just this one bar. And we want to see all the drum sounds, but also as big as possible. All right, this looks good now. So before we start to put in some notes, let's take a look on the grid. The grid is how many slices we see in this window. So basically this is one bar and a bar has four beats. So if we go now to quarters, we see exactly one, two, three, four beats. Maybe we set four hi-hat on uh, beats on these four beats. We make this with a double click. So we go to the raw hi-hat. Yeah, we can click here to hear the sound. This is a little bit more open hi-hat. This is a little bit more close. We make a double click here in this first field and on the second and on the third and on the fourth. Let's listen to this. If you made a mistake, you can use the undo command that you also can use with command or control set. Undo, undo, undo. You also have the possibility to select one note or many notes and delete them with the backspace key. Or you can delete them with this tool here simply by clicking with this tool on it. Okay. So we have now our four clicks. Let's set a bass drum on the first beat. Let's set the snare drum, that's this little baby here, on two and four. So on the 1.2.1 and on the 1.4.1. So in 90% of the pop or club tracks, you have a bass drum on the one, you have a snare on two and four. Very often you also have a clap on two and four. So let's do this. The clap, we also make here a double click on two and four. So there are many possibilities where we set the bass drum now. If we want to make a four to the floor beat, like you hear it in every house or techno track, we place the bass drum on one, two, three, and four. Very easy, like this. But maybe we want to do something more creative. So let's go from quarter notes to eight notes. And now we delete all the bass drums by selecting them and using the backspace key, for example. We set the first bass drum here again on the one. And maybe we set one... Uh, eighth note before the second snare means here on the one three three. Let's listen to this. We also could make a second bass drum here. Also bass drum here on the one four three on the last eighth note. We also could go here to 16th notes to make something more creative. Let's click a 16 here before the first snare. Let's place this bass drum here. That sounds pretty cool. So that's something I don't like, that's the hi-hat. We could play maybe the hi-hat, not in quarter notes. We could play the hi-hat in eight notes. So we change the grid to eight notes. And now we create, make it here, 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 and here. 
Mm -hmm. Maybe it also would sound nice in 16th notes. So we go to 16th and now we place the hi-hat here, 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 poo. This sounds like a lot of work. Maybe there's a simpler way to do this. So let's erase it again. Let's go to the pencil, right? So with the pencil, we don't need a double click. We can simply click it one time to place it here. That's very easy. But there's a better trick. If we click on the pencil and hold down the mouse, you could go down to draw multiple notes. And now I can click one time, hold down the mouse and move it to the right. Oh, that's pretty cool. Let's listen to that. And that's pretty easy, right? So again, let's erase all the notes. Let's go to the special uh, draw multiple notes tool and simply click one time, move it to the right. We could make it more interesting by erasing some notes like here, there and there, something like this. Oh, pretty cool, right? Or we could work with velocity. Huh, what's the velocity? Let's start from scratch, but you can keep these notes, but I erase them for now to explain you the velocity. Let's make three snares. And where do we see the velocity? We see it over here. We have here the three velocities of our three snares. We can make this a little bit bigger by clicking here on this line and moving it up. All right. And now we can use the normal pencil tool to change the velocity. Let's do this and now listen to the difference between the first with a lot of velocity, the second with uh, just a little bit velocity and the third with medium velocity. Or maybe we make it a little bit stronger. We make the third here with a lot of velocity and the second with less. So normally the velocity controls the volume. What is the velocity? It's how fast you press the key on your keyboard. So this also could do something else with your sound. Sometimes it's using a filter so the notes with more velocity sounds with more high frequencies and uh, the with um, less velocity are a little bit deeper. But the most of the time it's the volume of the note, right? Like here. So again, if we have a lot of snares, we could make something like this. How do I do this? I hold down the Option or the Alt key, I click here and now I move it up to here. And now we made something like this. So let's go back to our example. Um, we make four hi-hats like here, here and here. We use the pencil to change the velocity. So we bring to the middle the first hi-hat, we bring totally down the second one, totally up the third and again down the number four. So it should sound like this. And now we select all four hi-hats and with Control or Command D, we can duplicate it. So this sounds more interesting if we have a different rhythmic. And now let's make again the clap and the snare on two and four. So again here and here. Again the bass drum here and here and maybe here and here. If you were able to do this and it sounds like this, I say congratulations, you made now your first creative beat. In the next tutorial, I will show you how to make a little arrangement by using more sounds like synthesizers, samples and drum machines. 
So don't miss this. To see my next tutorials, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Please leave me a comment where you write me if this tutorial was helpful for you. And you also can ask here any questions about Reason 12. Thank you for being here. Always stay creative. Cheers. Oh, I still have one more thing. If you like producing music like me, then you probably know the problem of finding good drum and percussion sounds. Those who came with the music program do not sound right and on all internet sites where you would get the really good stuff, you pay a fortune. On all? No, not really. There's a web page in whose development I'm involved. Mugent.com Mugent is written with M-U-G-E-N-T and it comes from Musically Intelligent. Mugent. You can find drum beats that sounds exactly like what you hear in the charts or in the big clubs in Ibiza, Miami or Berlin. The web page reminds a little bit of Google. You can just use the text search, get immediately results you can listen to and download for free, or you can use the menus with which you can narrow down the search. On Mugent you can find drum sounds to every genre, music loops, so complete beats, percussion single sounds and loops, cool bass riffs, funky brass and synth riffs, guitars, and all sorts of sound effects from birds to cars, from the sound of the sea to helicopters. With me, there is no more production where I didn't use the sounds from Mutant.com. Take a look, you will love it. My name is Thomas Foster. Thanks for following. Always stay creative. Cheers.